Hi, this is Dennis with EDU 709. It's March 17th, 2019. And I want to read from this paper, this research paper. It's called Making an Inquiry into Blended Learning, Investigating this Educational Innovation with an Eye on Student Achievement. This is through Central Michigan University's Global Campus. Introduction, which is part one, what is blended learning in the context of how various teaching strategies <clears throat> are being used for the engagement of 21st century students? Christopher Pappas, when writing a concise article for e-learning industry, illustrates some particulars which will prove helpful in conceptualizing the answer to this question. In blended learning versus flipped learning, he states that blended learning is a means by which teachers cultivate a reality where online and face-to-face -face instruction are amalgamated to the extent that they come alongside each other in order to provide a comprehensive learning experience. Pappas paragraph one. In addition, knowing that our current education culture champions the fundamental objective to increase student learning outcomes, how significant is the integration of this technological innovation? Consequently, this writer shall endeavor to consider various relevant factors, as well as to impart the evaluation of two dialectically harnessed perspectives surrounding the use of the blended learning strategy. Nevertheless, an online educational resource, which is strategically produced by the Office of the Vice Provost for Teaching and Learning at Stanford University, describes blended learning as moving basic content online, such as the presentation of preliminary knowledge and definitions, so that as out-of-class activities, the students can do assignments at their own pace which subsequently provides more opportunities for active learning and collaboration during in-class time. That's blended paragraph two. However, prior to considering with greater depth the global influence and significance which this educational strategy is having at the close of the second decade of the 21st century, we must first consider this topic in the framework of its historical context. Going to page three now, we must gaze, this is actually part two, impact on education. Now, we must gaze into an antecedent manifestation of blended learning as documented in a YouTube video produced by World Government Summit. In the video, How is Blended Learning Disrupting Classrooms? We learned that the progression of blended, excuse me, the progression of blending technology into the classroom environment is not new because the 20th century witnessed the earliest attempts being the immersion of video into lesson plans. Summit. To refute that innovative technologies which make blended learning possible have directly resulted in novel ways to gain and share knowledge would be as nonsensical as an alert person not seeing a giraffe or a rhinoceros 10 feet in front of them as they sit and gaze forward from inside a parked Honda Accord. Hence, the magnitude and immensity of modern-day hardware and software applications, together with internet connectivity, can only leave us spellbound. See Appendix A. For example, learning management systems have allowed for individuals to participate in self-paced online course experiences. Moving forward, we must inquire, what should we do about the existence of such technological innovations? The next section will seek to provide clarification, which is part three, issues and implications. Regarding different perspectives on this critical issue, let's define our terms for the binary arguments this writer alluded to in his thesis statement. Position one and position two do not represent polarized attitudes where, with tremendous hostility, the former affirms and the later or the latter refutes the following premise. The successful manifestation of the blended learning approach to the degree that it nurtures student inquiry-based learning ought to be 
a unanimous conviction within the education culture of 2019 and beyond. Rather, the deep-seated concerns and logic of position one and position two are fully rooted in the belief that blended learning can and should work. However, if success is to prevail, then understanding the pitfalls on the journey toward achieving it is nothing short of paramount. The triumph lies, therefore, in comprehending what a brilliant University of Kansas professor, Yong Zhao, I think I pronounced his name correctly, revealed through an article he played the major role in writing while at Michigan State University. Nevertheless, in conditions for classroom technology innovations, he trumpets a fundamental issue around the interaction between technology and education is the conditions under which technology can be effectively used in classrooms to improve student learning. Zhao, page 483. Consequently, position one articulates that which constitutes the favorable dimensions of blended learning as they facilitate learning gains for students, while position two raises concerns in light of primary conditions as well as secondary factors which disrupt good intentions to facilitate technology innovation. Let's concisely consider some concerns and ramifications as revealed from these two persuasions. Firstly, position one, in repudiation of views that would criticize the integrity of blended learning efforts, according to blended learning versus flipped learning, asserts that Online materials do not take the place of face-to-face -face instruction. Instead, the two modalities complement one another. They truly blend in order to create an enriched online training environment for the learner. Pappas, paragraph 1. Moreover, according to How is Blended Learning Disrupting Classrooms, we learn that this innovation allows each pupil to work according to their particular needs without restricting when the students learn. Summit. This flexibility and freedom can truly support student achievement so long as teachers demonstrate best practices through how they create their lesson plans. For example, blended learning versus flipped learning. Perhaps that's versus. V-S. Verse or versus insists that teachers help students by making available an abundance of supplemental resources and, depending on whether they need remediation or enrichment, equipping them with a list of articles and sites they find, excuse me, they might find helpful or by permitting them the opportunity to learn more on their own through informative e-learning videos and online lectures. Pappas paragraph 5. Secondly, position 2. In sounding an alarm for prudence, and according to how is blended learning disrupting classrooms, declares that simply bringing technology into the classroom is insufficient. As evidenced by the failed effort of the South American nation, Peru, which spent over 200 million U.S. dollars to equip 800,000 public school students with low-cost laptops However, the initiative failed for a variety of reasons. Summit. The basis for such reasons is profoundly zeroed in on in the article, Conditions for Classroom Technology Innovations, when it states three factors associated with the teacher have been found to contribute significantly to the success of the class, excuse me, to the success of classroom technology innovations. Technology proficiency pedagogical compatibility, and social awareness. Zhao, page 489. Finally, position two, in concert with position one's optimism, by way of the do's and don'ts of blended teaching for remediation, posits the following admonition. Teachers cannot rely solely on technology to remediate students' gaps while focusing all of their own time on grade level instruction. Anthony, paragraph 9. Let's turn our attention to the future of blended learning. Part 4. Future Trends. It is clear that educational technology has provided and will do so for perpetuity the means by which teachers and those in every sphere of human industry, 
can strategically innovate for the purpose of achieving their goals, i.e., in the case of education, to engage students on the road toward empirically verifiable learning gains. Consequently, there is no plausible reason to think that this direction will decrease or cease. Rather, the utilization of technology in society is on an upward trajectory, as this writer articulated before, yet in another aspect, we must at this time put the present appearance of blended learning into a historical context before looking toward the future. In key factors of affecting blended learning satisfaction, we learn that because of good ICT infrastructure, Peking University began the exploration on blended learning in the end of 1990s. Should say in the end of the 1990s. Zhao N, is it Wan? I don't know how to say that word. Page 283, that name, Y-U-A-N. Yun, Wan, I'm not sure. Subsequently, multiple nations have embraced digital platforms as a means to facilitate blended learning. Case in point, how is blended learning disrupting classrooms? Reports that in the UK, 75% of schools publish course material online. Summit. Moreover, Harvard University, like so many other American post-secondary institutions, has embraced the opportunity to provide online learning courses for students to access anytime and from anywhere. Interestingly, since some courses are free, high school teachers of AP World History, for example, could harness Harvard University's China X MOOC as a means to perpetuate a blended learning experience for students. We can expect to see many more of these self-paced, on-demand learning occasions in the future. As Learning Management Systems, LMS, together with various cloud-based tools, become more advanced and available, blended learning will undoubtedly thrive in a dynamic context. As a result of the aforementioned, we should take heed to the obvious need for bridging the gap between existing technological innovations and the ability to successfully utilize them. Paramount to all of this is the realization that all stakeholders must support reasonable efforts to equip our school districts with the knowledge to use various innovations which can foster student achievement. The circumstantial issues which must be confronted are vast, but not so overwhelming that they can't be overcome. As the socio-technological evolution of blended learning should teach us, there are many factors related to maximizing the potential for success, such as the prerequisite of perfecting information and communications technology, which must be understood in the scope. It must be understood in the scope of what best serves the needs of both teachers and students. It is, therefore, this sensibility into what is at stake and according to conditions for classroom technology innovations that we must act upon the knowledge that teachers need access to a healthy human infrastructure and a functional and convenient technical infrastructure because in many schools over the course of past decades, Teachers did not have easy access to either of the two infrastructures. Zhao et al., page 512. Consequently, if we want blended learning and other innovations to improve the learning outcomes and experiences within our school communities, then we must overcome the tendency toward poor planning and policies and persevere in pursuing the knowledge which will lead to a comprehensive pursuit for solutions. Finally, the Greek philosopher and mathematician, credited with the formula for finding a missing length on a right triangle, can offer us wisdom in this educational task at hand. The New Dictionary of Thoughts quotes Pythagoras as saying, Choose always the way that seems the best, however rough it may be. Custom will soon render it easy and agreeable. Edwards, page 87. And then I go on with a little more information here as we work our way down to the references. 
Anthony Elizabeth, the do's and don'ts of blended alert, excuse me, the do's and don'ts of blended teaching for remediation. That's uh, blended learning universe. Uh, blended, that's Stanford University, undergrad, main site, the teaching commons, and Edwards Tryon, the new dictionary of thoughts, standard book company, 1965. I'm just giving some brief uh, audio or oral uh, descriptions here of uh, these sources. Pappas, Christopher, blended learning versus flipped learning. Can you tell the difference? Summit, world government, how is blended learning disrupting classrooms? That's a YouTube video. Zhao, and these other names here, key factors of affecting blended learning satisfaction. A study on pecking university students. That's uh, Springer Link. I guess I came from Germany. That's quite an expensive download for that paper. And Zhao, or no, the download's not too bad, it's the hard copy. That's expensive. And Zhao Yang, or Yang Zhao, Dr. Yang Zhao, Conditions for Classroom Technology Innovations. So I think that's going to have to do it. Okay, thank you for listening and viewing.